Hi, I'm Fritz with Argo Adventure. We have got a 2021 700 8x8 Argo Frontier Scout uh, that we're going to take a good look at today and try to help you make an educated decision on whether or not this is going to be your hunting buddy. So lengthwise, we have got from the front of the winch to the back bumper, this one comes in at about 10 and a half feet. Um, width, same as the other Argos, it's going to come in just under five feet. Uh, weight of this vehicle, by the time you put gas and stuff in it, because it has the hood rack, the winch and the brush guard, you're going to come in at about 1,300 pounds. Um, that being said, we'll go, we're going to start and kind of go around the bottom here. So the 8x8 Frontier Scout has a full length skid plate. That's this quarter inch panel. It runs full length all the way uh, the entire bottom. On the front two corners, you do have tie downs here. Now, something I haven't mentioned in the other videos, if you were to put a snow plow on here, you lose these two tie downs and there's a bracket that goes on there that your snow plow mounts to. Um, but you have the two tie downs in the front and when we get to the back, there's a couple tie downs on the trailer hitch for uh, this trailering or whatever the case would be that way. Um, this aluminum housing, the, the four corner axles all have the, the bearing extension housings on all of the Scouts. As we move around, we have got the Frontier Scout comes equipped with the 24 by 10 by 8 tire on the steel offset rim. And just, I know most people understand tires, but it's 24 inches tall, 10 inches wide. And then it has the eight inch steel offset rim. And the offset rim, I, I emphasize that because it allows you to switch the wheels from side to side and it'll actually move the tire and wheel out that will allow you to run tracks without the track hooking the body. So it eliminates the spaces like the older vehicles had. Moving around to the side of the vehicle, uh, we've obviously been an eight wheeler. We have uh, four tires. Um, uh, I want to point out the, the, I guess, anatomy, so to speak, of the frame. The eight wheelers have that banana frame to where your front axle and your rear axle are actually elevated a little higher than the center two axles, and that is for turning capability. It is typical to see, as you'll probably see in the picture, how the back tires of the eight wheeler are up just a little bit. And that is due to the fact that there's more weight in the front of the vehicle with the engine and that kind of tips it up. As we move to the rear of the vehicle, we've got a two inch standard receiver. Now this will be the same receiver like your pickups have and it has that same smaller pin. Here's your two tie down uh, points in the back of the vehicle and it does have the bearing extension housings. And then here's the skid plate coming up that we talked about in the front. Drain plugs, uh, if you were to be, have rain or whatever the case and you need to wash it or whatever the case is that you need to drain it, they're a screw in drain plug. They just drop out and if the vehicle is elevated with the front end up a little bit, uh, the water or any excess stuff, you could wash it out the back. And I think that kind of takes care of this. Okay, now we're going to kind of focus on the upper body of this vehicle. Now, here's where the Scout is different than a lot of the other vehicles. For one, we've got full camo on the upper body. Now this is actually shadow grass is what this is for the camo. You can get it in two camo patterns, either shadow grass or breakup. And uh, the breakup is more of a woodland. This would be more if you're a waterfowl hunter doing that type of stuff. Some of the other stuff that is standard on a scout, you end up with a 2,500 worn winch, 2,500 pound worn winch. I do want to point out uh, a few things. If you were uh, going hunting and you're going to go to a hotel and your machine's sitting on the trailer and you're worried about somebody maybe taking your winch, there is two pins right here. There's a little key you pop out. You can pull those keys out and there's a quick disconnect and you can take the winch off and either lock it in your truck or a toolbox or put it in your room. So this does come on and off, which actually allows you to, if you had a rear receiver for the winch, you could actually move the winch from front to back, but you, that is not included in this. You also get the brush guard. Uh, that is, uh, it's a 
pretty beefy outfit on all of the scouts. Next in line, we get this full, or uh, it's basically a front hood rack. Now, I've got this to where it lifts up and down. This does snap into place on each side. I'm just doing it this way so you guys can see this. This will actually fold up to where you have access to lift the hood and check your oil and do whatever you want. Or with that rack, you can pull these two pins. There's a little pin that will pull out here and you can completely lift the rack off and set it on a table or a workbench if you're gonna be doing service to the vehicle. So we will raise this up. As far as the hood, same latches as all the other Argos. They just got the quick little snap. You can lift up your hood. The Scout is powered by a 23 horse fuel injected Kohler. And this has been a wonderful little motor, it gives you plenty of power. Um, you have got your 12 volt battery, same location as the other Argos. Uh, classic transmission is in all the Scouts. Uh, you've got the classic transmission down here. This here is your centrifugal clutch with the CVT uh, for continual variable speed. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's basically a CVT uh, transmission going from the engine to the or to power and I'm stumbling around here. Um, we have a canister here. This is for California emissions. So if you're in California, all of the frontiers again are 100% compliant that we bring in. This is an option. So if you've lived from California, make sure you get one with California emissions. Um, we do have uh, just your little outfit here. You can pop the cover off. This is where your fuse panel, where all of that stuff is located. And then last but not least here, we have our engine oil dipstick for checking the oil and your transmission oil dipstick for checking your transmission oil, which makes it easy for your daily checks. So on the interior of the vehicle, we'll start off with the Argo Progressive Steering. Um, that's the APS. Basically, uh, and if you've been watching the videos, you'll already know Hayes Brake designed the steering for Argo. And basically they have a spring assist down here under the firewall for when you turn the handlebars, it kind of springs one way or another. But basically it just takes the effort. It doesn't feel like you're braking it like you're actually doing near as much as it did on the older vehicles. Anyway, so you're, that's as far as it'll turn to the right and your left. So that's your actual movement of the handlebar. Um, starting the vehicle, it's uh, standard, turn the key on, pull the brake, push the button and like the ATVs are and it'll, it'll start up and it will start in gear because of the fact that you are pulling the brake. Now, with that being said, you do have a kill switch here on the handlebar or you just shut your key off. So, and this vehicle is fuel injected, so there's no choke, nothing that way. Um, when we get up to the rest of the dash here, uh, the Scout comes standard with a bilge pump, which it is operated when the key's on. Second switch here, this is the, the toggle switch that runs the winch in and out. And then as we move over, you've got your little LED gauge that's gonna give you, um, it'll be your, your speedometer, which uh, we'll talk about speed in a second, but your speedometer, your, your voltage, so you can see if your battery's charging, and it's got a tachometer that'll go around on there. And I think there's a clock and a few other things. You still have a, uh, three other places here that if you were adding a light bar or something that way, that you could have some other switches on your dash panel. And you also have a 12 volt outlet here uh, if you needed to plug something in. Uh, over here is your mechanical park brake. Uh, this is for basically trailering or any time you're going to get out of the vehicle, you really should engage that brake and it will, it will stop everything. Uh, meanwhile, we've got a couple cup holders up here, one on each side on the, on the Frontier Scout, and we've got our grab handles both on both sides up on the dash as well as getting in. Now something for those of you that if you're saying, I don't know whether or not I want this vehicle or a regular Frontier 700 or a Frontier 650, the dimensions of this are identical on all three of the eight wheelers as far as the inside goes, just so you know. Moving down here to the firewall, we have got our transmission shifter. Um, you've got low range, high range, neutral and reverse and neutrals up and down, reverse is just up and over. Um, this is probably a good time to cover the speed on this vehicle. Um, the, 
the Scout has the classic transmission and low range and reverse are gonna be that 10 to 15 mile an hour and high range is going to be probably that 18 to 22. And I may vary a little bit in my talking here, but the vehicles do vary just a little bit anyway in speed. But uh, the big thing when I'm saying 18 to 22, it comes down to the gear ratio of the transmission. If you have the high output, it's a little slower. You'll have a little more power. If the vehicle is equipped with the standard, um, it will be a little faster and your dealer will be able to tell you that when you call them um, if you're looking at one on a floor. Um, so I've got to actually, you're gonna see a few bolts missing here on the floor. I have that out because we're gonna pull the floor pans here in a second. So um, I wanna get to the seat. Seat actually lifts up. Um, you have this whole thing can be storage or whatever you want underneath. So that's actually pretty nice. Uh, and actually something I didn't point out on the other videos, there is a couple pins here. You pull these pins, there's another little key that will walk out and you can actually take the seat completely off. So it could open it up even a little more. As we go to the back of the vehicle, um, standard is all the other frontiers. You've got your two seats that come in and out. Um, your molded floor pan in the bottom and your gas tank is under the seat that I believe it's 7.1 gallon, uh, give or take a little bit there, but the, the Kohler is really good on fuel as well. And as with the other videos, I will get in the vehicle. Um, just to give you an idea of the room, there is room for four people back here. Um, load capacities, you can get all that off the brochure, but basically you can haul six people on land, uh, average size people, and you're going to float four people is what the Frontier will do, or the Scout. Okay, I want to get in the front and point out leg room. And I said this in the other videos, I am 5'11". And the big thing I want to point out, the tall guys are always wondering is, are my knees going to hit the dash or are they going to hit the handlebars? And you've got all kinds of room both ways, even if you're, unless you're over seven foot, then it might be really tight. Otherwise, I think you're going to be good to go. Something else I want to point out, I know this is not in my good order. We, on all the scouts, you've got that finger pull throttle too. We, we forgot to highlight that, that there is no longer a twist grip. So it's really easy to drive. Okay, so we're gonna kind of lift things apart as if you were gonna service the vehicle. Now, if I was gonna service it, I would actually take these two pins out and take this rack completely off, but for the video, I'm just gonna lean it back here. Um, hood, lift the little latches. You can actually lift this up, tap it to the side, it will come off. As we go to the engine compartment, there is five bolts that it would take a half inch socket that are fastening the firewall in. So you will need a half inch ratchet to, or a half inch socket to get those out. And then in the floorboard, there is four, it'll take a 3 16 Allen bolt. Uh, there's four spots down there that hold the floor pan in for the flat four floor pan. Once your fasteners are out, firewall this lifts out of there as well as the floor pan. Once that is out, uh, once that is out, you will have access to the classic transmission, basically your brakes, and uh, I pointed that out, I think, in a couple videos, but that's your bilge pump. But basically, it gives you access to your drivetrain. Now we're gonna move to the back. In the back of the vehicle, the molded floor pan, they have these little plastic deals that sometimes catch, sometimes they don't. If they catch, you just tap it with your fist, otherwise pull up and you'll notice how it doesn't quite fit through here. Just twist it sideways and it won't damage your seats or anything and you can lift that floor pan completely out of there. Once that is out, from a serviceability standpoint, you have access to your complete drivetrain. You can lubricate your chains, grease it, wash it, whatever you gotta do, more or less from front to back. So in uh, closing this little video, we've got the 2021 700 8x8 Scout. Uh, just keep in mind, as with all the Argos, there's actually an array of tracks, you different track options you can put on. You can put on the windshield and top. Um, this vehicle, you could run a snow plow. There is a bunch of goodies you can do with it or accessories you can add on. If you have any questions, just give the shop a call. We'll walk you through anything you got and maybe we can get this little devil sitting in your garage. Thank you.